This year marks half a century since Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated. The civil rights leader is well known for having championed the rights of black America. Yet unknown to most, the FBI listed him as one of the most dangerous men in the United States. He fought for the minority, the disenfranchised, and those who suffered injustice, and his work paved the way for all Americans. Every year, WNYC and Harlem's historic Apollo Theater hold an event to commemorate Dr. King's legacy. This year, they will explore the progress that has been made since Dr. King's murder and the evolution and persistence of issues he fought to eliminate. Topics like racial and wage inequality, to housing discrimination, to police brutality. Here to help answer this question and discuss the legacy of Dr. King is WNYC host Brian Lair. And joining us on the phone, Dr. Clarence B. Jones, Martin Luther King's attorney, former confidant and friend. Together, Brian and Dr. Jones will lead the collaboration between the Apollo Theater and WNYC, meant to celebrate and explore the life of Dr. King and the legacy of civil rights in America. Brian, welcome to the program, and also welcome to uh, Dr. Jones on the phone. So first question uh, to Brian. Tell us a little bit about this event. How long has it been going on? What is it that's going to be happening at the Apollo? This has been going on for more than a dozen years. This is our fifth year doing it at the Apollo which is such a great place to celebrate the life and the accomplishments and the issues pertaining to Dr. Martin Luther King. And I'll be leading the conversation with my colleague, Jamie Floyd from WNYC, our All Things Considered host. And we have special guests, including Dr. Jones and Linda Sarsour, who was one of the four chief organizers of the Women's March last year. Uh, because, of course, Dr. King was for all kinds of human rights. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, also Patrice Cullors, who's one of the founders of Black Lives Matter. Uh, and there's entertainment. We'll have a youth gospel choir. And it's a very exciting. It's always a fun afternoon. Uh, to Dr. Jones, I'd like to ask you, having had personal knowledge of Dr. King, what is it that seems to be missing from the way he's portrayed in the American lexicon, sort of in pop culture? The principal thing that's missing, the preoccupation with the, the speaker of the celebrated I Have a Dream speech. They have this icon, moral leader, conscience of America to end racial segregation. And indeed, he was all of those things. But in terms of his legacy, extracting from that, I think he would consider most relevant is those things which were paramount of his concern. And they were, uh, you know, militarism, poverty, and racism. And particularly, particularly the question of uh, income inequality and, uh, and the poor. The, the, the speech he gave five uh, days before he was assassinated, speech he gave at the National Cathedral in Washington, D.C. on March 31st in Washington, D.C., 1968, five days before his assassination, the subject was sleeping through a revolution. And he uh, called attention to the nation at that time. Our country was sleeping through a, a revolution. He talked about the revolution of uh, technology and uh, human rights and so forth. Dr. Jones, I'd like to go to a question from Brian Lehrer. This year, I think, is such a, uh, a ripe year, such a great opportunity for reminding the country of some of the most important parts of Dr. King's work that I think do get lost. And, you know, he gets a little bit, um, what, what's the word? Like, uh, uh, sanitized. Kind of ana sanitized. Yeah, sanitized is exactly the right word. I believe uh, Senator Booker once referred to it as the Santa Clausification of Dr. Martin Luther King. Perfect. So people who didn't live through Dr. King's era might think that he was kind of namby pamby, kumbaya, can't we all get along? Mm -hmm. And he certainly exactly. was. Uh, can't we all get along <clears throat> to, you know, a very prominent and something to be proud of degree. But this year is such an opportunity to remind people of how he was so much more than that, because it is the 50th anniversary of his assassination. And on Thank the you. night before he was killed, why was he in Memphis? He was in Memphis to support a sanitation workers strike for Hello. decent wages. And that was part of his poor people's campaign. So that is correct. Wasn't that, now, just you, now you're talking. Equal <laughs> rights on paper. Uh, if Dr. Jones is backing me up, I feel really good. Dr. Clarence B. Jones, I want to thank you so much for joining us. And of course, WNYC's Brian Lair, always a pleasure to have you on the show. 
For tickets to the WNYC, an Apollo Theater collaboration 50 years after MLK, A Dream Deferred, on Sunday the 14th at 3 p.m., visit the theater online, apollotheater.org.